Since December 15th, AT&T has been up 23%, but that momentum was killed when this week the stock dropped once again 9%. This confused long-term AT&T investors such as myself as they actually reported a really good quarter. So in today's AT&T update, we'll be going over the recently quarter report. We're also going to be going over why I think it's still a good hold and buy in 2022 and beyond. And most importantly, we're going to be going over why I think it went down. If you're new to the channel, my name's Ryan. I'm 16 years old and I do dividend growth investing. So make sure if you're new here, again, subscribe, turn on post notifications. I upload every Saturday. Um, we do portfolio updates. I make a lot of AT&T videos, if you can't tell already. And also, join the Discord link in the description. We also usually debate on there why I think AT&T is still a good stock. Again, I upload every Saturday. Make sure to smash the like button, subscribe, and roll the intro. Hello, I like money. All right, to start off, AT&T reported a better than expected fourth quarter profit and revenue. They beat estimates by two cents and adjusted quarterly profit of 78 cents per share, helped along by HBO Max growth, which obviously, you know, doesn't matter for long-term investors because they won't have that asset after the uh, supposed spinoff, as we'll go over later. So everything, just looking at this little article made by CB CNBC, it looks fine right now. So now we're going to actually go into the specifics here of the quarterly report, which should make long-term dividend investors such as myself and AT&T very happy. All right, consolidated revenues of $41 billion, reported EPS of $0.69, cents, wink, wink, compared to $1.95 in the year-ago quarter, which includes non-cash charges, adjusted EPS of $0.78 cents compared to $0.75 cents a year ago, cash operations of $11.3 billion, capital expenditures of $33.8 billion, and free cash flow of $8.7 billion. To continue, they have an increased EPS, reported EPS, I should say, of $2.01, up from the prior year, an adjusted EPS up $3.40 from $3.18 from the last year, cash from operations $42 billion, $168.9 billion in consolidated revenues, and $26.8 billion in free cash flow. As I said earlier, they also um, sought growth in their fiber business with, you know, subscriptions, along with their HBO Max, you know, business and all that type of other good stuff, mainly, but I want to focus on the telecommunications business because that's what long-term investors should be focused on, and they saw growth in that. But of course, it wouldn't be an AT&T quarterly report if short-term investors sold out of the position because of one thing they heard. AT&T CEO John Stanky went on CNBC to answer some questions from the hosts. Here's a statement that myself and other investors think is what caused AT&T stock to drop almost 9%. The thinking behind either one of those, because they both have their benefits and or potential drawbacks, whether you simply as a div essentially give a share, to, a, a percentage share of, e of Discovery, Warner Discovery to each of your shareholders, or actually do an exchange offer whereby you really would end up retiring potentially a good amount of AT&T shares. Yeah, we kept that option open for good reason, because we wanted to assess what the state of the market was as we got closer to the close of the transaction. When we think about going through the dynamics of, of a split, it's, it's what you said earlier, which is we'd like to possibly over time reduce the AT&T share count. And this may be one way to do that. However, it is a very, very large split. It's unparalleled in terms of anything that's been done ever in history. And, you know, that certainly gives me some pause and we have a very large retail base in the AT&T stock right now as well. And that retail base sometimes isn't quite as deep in some of these issues as the institutional base is. And so I'm very mindful of the fact that whatever we decide to do, it has to be something that can be clearly communicated so that there isn't confusion in the marketplace and a lot of people carping. One of the things that's guiding us is as we started this, we wanted to do this for sure. So basically, if they were to do a split, they'd be giving the shareholder, current AT&T shareholders an option of whether holding their AT&T shares or going to Warner, the new company. Or if they were to do a spin-off, they would be giving um, AT&T shareholders, I think, 71% of the new company. In my opinion, quite obviously, he's leaning towards the spin-off, which everybody kind of assumed they would be doing. So, obviously, I think that causes more fear or question in investors, and that's why it sold off almost 9%.
Now here's a clip of Stanky explaining why he thinks that AT&T is only going to go up. I believe now. we're seeing right now, as you alluded to, as we get closer to the close date, as the uncertainty comes away, as all the questions about whether or not this is going to happen and when it's going to happen, I think we're now seeing investors look at it and say... All right, guys, so obviously nothing fundamentally has changed with the business. And actually, the stock is up like 4 or 5%, so... This little short-term blip, I think, was only a buying opportunity for long-term investors. So what I think is going to happen, basically, I've said this in my previous videos, I think the stock's going to remain flat, maybe go up a little bit, but until that deal closes in mid-2022, I think, you know, at and is just going to stay flat, and that's why I haven't been buying anything recently, along with, um, you know, I'm me not having money. But um, I think that the stock is just going to remain flat and be a promising buying opportunity for long-term investors who want to invest in at and communications business. And at the end of the day, T's communications business has been really, you know, solid. It ha You're not going to see huge growth, um, but it should be able to pay, you know, still a pretty nice dividend. Um, people are forgetting to the dividend is going to be nice still, 4, 4 to 5%, I think. Uh, it's going to be like a half, maybe a 40% cut. So it's still a really appealing dividend. As I said earlier, I'm still invested in T because I don't rely on the dividend income and I think it is still a really good business and not a great business, but a good business with um, solid growth and solid returns in their telecommunications business, which will further grow to consistent growth and dividend growth in the future. So guys, that's going to be the end of the video. I appreciate you guys for watching. Again, if you're new here, make sure to like, subscribe. I'm trying to hit 150 by the end of the year. That's my goal. So I'd really appreciate it if you guys could help. Make sure to turn on post notifications. Again, um, let me know what your comments are on AT&T in the comment section. Wink, wink. Again, lastly, do dividend stocks, not drugs. Have a good day. Like and subscribe to the Discord.